This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Hello, and welcome back to Pokemon Ecology. Today's episode is about the Eeveelutions, who have some of the strangest dex entries I've ever read, requiring some clever reasoning in order to put them all together. They also have some of the most obscure Pokemon trivia I think I've ever read. Without further ado, let's get into things. By the way, evolution stones are apparently radioactive in some capacity. According to Pokemon Yellow, Eevee are nearly extinct or worse. This is doubtful as they make phenomenal pets, but perhaps they mean in the wild, and by a few, they mean in reference to a proper wild population size. Eevee altering the composition of its body to suit its environment is something we see over generations in real life, as everyone knows, but humans and bears do it within lifetimes. Melanin in humans is produced to block out intense sunlight. I swear I remember reading in evolutionary biology that brown and polar bears had some Something similar with their fur, but I couldn't find information on this. I do know, however, that they're ridiculously close genetically. Regardless, a human being able to manipulate sunlight just by exposure to it is less realistic. However, if we assume animals have mana and magical powers, it becomes more reasonable maybe. Considering that friendship is apparently an environmental factor, it's possible that the evolutions are just designed to be cute. Also, I would consider Umbreon and Espeon friendship to be different from Sylveon affection, where Umbreon and Espeon are simply experiencing night and day and learning to act in it, Sylveon is just getting brushed off. Demon and Pearl state that Eevee adapts to harsh environments. Platinum states that a variety of causes affect evolution. Mice and mosquitoes in real life, for example, rapidly develop poison immunities in larger populations. And there is a population of lizards very rapidly developing stickier hands to be able to live in treetops instead of on the ground. However, things like this are typically after generations of exposure to a new environment rather than exposure in adolescence. In real life, certain elements of stress, in humans at least, can change your genetics. I don't think it goes as far as Eevees do though, but let me know if one of you out there developed bending powers from having abusive parents. Eevee is as standard of a carnivorean as one can get. By design, the ears are most similar to a desert fox, which are as large as that to shade from sun and provide heat control. The head is shaped quite a bit like a pug's, but secondarily more like a felid skull as it's shorter and blunter, which provides stronger chomps and weaker chews. Due to this, its side is likely mostly meat and maybe insects with a few veggies and berries supplementing the nutrition. The body is small and centered, somewhat reminiscent of desert foxes, but that's a bit of a stretch. Kanto has always seemed a bit savannah-y to me, but maybe that's just because of this image from the habitat search of the fire red leaf green decks. The scarf mane is likely identical in purpose to a real life mane, serving as a symbol of health and a mild threat display, even if it is adorable. With the three initial evolutions, it appears that the scarf may also be an element of how it absorbs elements, but if that was a focus of the design, then it was lost as soon as generation two. This leads me to believe that the initial three evolutions may be in more hostile environments than the others, leading to the mane being kept, though I don't see why it will be lost otherwise. In Sylveon's case, as the mane is a point of endearment, it could have adapted the mane into the ribbons which manipulate emotion somehow. The bushy tail could serve many purposes, but it likely mainly helps with balance and secondarily with communication. Considering how many companionship based evolutions Eevee has, they may live in packs. However, this certainly wasn't a forethought in its design as these don't come about until generation 2. The generation 5 animated sprite shows the ears and tail twitching and wagging though, perhaps these are communication methods for them. The gender difference for this species only exists because of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and it's lost on evolution, the difference being that the male tail coloration changes more more spiky than the females. Related, the population being significantly male is an issue. I believe this is present in some fish species, but as far as I'm aware, populations of mammals stick to an equal gender ratio. This, I suppose, gives females a higher survival rate, as a random EV being hunted is far less likely to be a female, but there would still be fewer females overall. Up first, we have Vaporeon. Its cell structure is similar to water molecules, and it will melt away and become invisible in water. I'm not entirely sure what is meant by this. The first half, at least, is bizarre. Becoming invisible in water isn't far off to the camouflage process some underwater creatures possess, but they don't melt into the water. Vaporeon's ability to sense weather with its fins isn't absurd. Some people can feel a storm coming by a number of ways, and some animals even have temperature sensitivity for this purpose. Vaporeon's fins having moisture sensitivity lets us know that it doesn't exclusively live in water as well. Some dex entries do say shores, but that could be by or in the water. Clean clear waters are its usual habitat, but one would think it would prefer murkier or otherwise darker water as it would help blend in easier, but I suppose this helps with seeing prey and it can go pretty much invisible anyway, so it doesn't matter. Vaporeon growing fins and gills is overall strange, but not only do humans have gills in utero, eastern newts lose their gills then regrow them as part of their life cycle. Additionally, the connection of skin between fingers is basically webbing. What's weird is not the presence of these, but instead the rapid development of them. Vaporeon scleras are black, while its pupils are white. This is 
is cool dinosaur syndrome at its worst, as pupils are black to absorb sunlight rather than white to reflect it. In the official artwork, it almost looks like light reflecting off of Vaporeon's eyes, but it's not. The scleras being black is not particularly troubling to me though. Its habitat is stated to be lakes, but we do also see it in oceans. Normally, external gills prefer rivers, where their gills are frilled up and exposed to more water to collect more oxygen. However, it seems that Vaporeon's gills have structure to them, though it wouldn't need this. Its slender body is great for swimming, see any modern aquatic predator mammal, except for the platypus. The dorsal fin running along its tail helps keep the Pokemon upright while swimming. It also helps with balance on land, but the large thick tail already covers that element. The front of the gills is bright white, while the back is normal blue. This is somewhat rare, but it might be a case of a trait present in animals that causes predators and prey to be momentarily stunned by a bright flash of color. The cotton mouth is the most relevant example of this sort of threat display. Flareon is absolutely absurd, and I'm thinking that fire types just have a theme of absurd temperature numbers. At least this one has an organ as an explanation, it's flame pouch. Flareon's internal body temperature can reach 1650 Fahrenheit, enough to boil sodium. At least it isn't vaporizing iron, I suppose, but Flareon does melt it with his 3000 degree breath. Genuinely cannot think of anything that does anything even remotely close to this. I have nothing to say about it other than this would take such an absurd amount of energy that they'd be hard pressed to feed themselves. They burn their food to well done before eating it, but this is detrimental to them. This lowers the nutrient content of their foods and they already have a lot of energy requirements. It also seems that the body temperature is unintentionally raised by the organ inside, and the first Birds are similar to polar bear fur, but instead of drawing sunlight in and keeping heat, it pulls heat out into the ambient environment. Its mane mainly serves for this heat control, but it is again likely an effective intimidation factor. It may even be used by some Flareon to determine partnership. Other than that, there's little physical difference from Eevee. Jolteon's 10,000 volt volts are weak compared to lightning bolts, which reach hundreds of millions of volts. Instead, Jolteon reaches powers a third greater than those of a metro train's rails. Due to not wanting to learn the very dizzying fundamentals of electricity, I learned a brief run over. Electricity of this voltage is usually fatal, but it all depends on the amperage. From what I can tell, voltage is the amount allowed to flow through. Think of it like the opening of a 5 gallon bucket versus a 5 gallon bottle, I think. Please fact check me in the comments. Jolteon's emotions change easily, which interestingly plays into its strengths as a mood change causes its fur to rub and charge power. When startled, its fur bristles, which is just like hedgehogs in real life. These needles are actually hairs that stiffen when they're scared. Jolteon, however, launches these hairs out as defense. This is how tarantulas defend themselves in real life, but they don't rely on wizard-like manipulations of the elements to do so. Jolteon's lungs contain an organ that generates electricity. As cool as this is, I cannot imagine an organ sitting comfortably in the lung. It being part of the respiratory system is far more believable, though. Its tail either becomes reduced or goes away completely, instead giving way to these glider-like structures on its rear. Also, in its black and white animated sprite, it shimmies together like rubbing socks on a carpet to generate charge. Our gold and soul silver share the same with an accompanying electrical flash. Before I move on, Flareon and Jolteon both have an explicitly stated breathing sac. Vaporeon may have this as well as some means of filtering the oxygen out of water with its gills. Could it be that Eevee has a vestigial sac that adapts to suit its new forms? On to Espeon. Fine hairs used to sense air currents is not a far detraction from spiders' fine hairs used for most of their senses. These hairs also being fine-tuned to sense air currents specifically makes sense, especially considering Vaporeon does something somewhat similar. The hair sensing enemies' movements is strange, however, but once again, not totally unfounded. Platypi have electric sensors in their snout that sense the electricity of muscle twitches in murky water. So while Platypi may not be seeing the future, Espeon isn't far off from what we see in real life. The forked tail quivering in anticipation of enemies' moves is likely just a reference to divining rods. The the forking of the tail also allows for interesting and possibly better balance control. The orb on its forehead glows when it uses Psycho Power. Psycho Power is strange, but we do have a few instances of glowing in real life, namely the anglerfish and firefly. While fireflies use a heatless chemical reaction to create their light, anglerfish use bioluminescent bacteria. Considering this entry, psychic power builds up in the orb on its forehead as it bathes in the sunshine. Espeon is not good at battling at night. Could the bioluminescent bacteria be photosynthetic? The orb even dims as Espeon loses power, possibly caused by exhausted symbionts. Along with this, could Flareon's fire, Jolteon's static, and Umbreon's poison also come from symbiotic bacteria that adapt swiftly to certain environments? Plenty of time in sunlight creates these possibly photosynthetic ones. Notable presence of heat causes them to adapt to that. Maybe even the water ones assist Vaporeon in oxygen creation, much like cow gut bacteria producing protein for the cow. With this revelation, does that mean Eevee's body simply responds to how this particular symbiont does? much like how research shows a link between depression and unhealthy gut bacteria? Could these biota live in that sac present in the Generation 1 evolutions? It's quite the stretch as only two of those three have a sac, and Espeon would have adapted the sac into a gem on its forehead, which is strange, but this line is already totally out the window with realism. The alternative theory to Eevee would of course be that its unstable DNA is inspired to adapt by forces in the environment and does so relatively easily, leading to such drastic changes in adolescence. I suppose one's opinion on which theory is best depends whether you trust the Pokedex or my psychotic ramblings.
Finishing up with Espeon though, the ears are quite large, but presumably its ears would reduce to some extent coming along with its newfound ability to sense opponent's attacks. It makes sense that it would still keep them though, if it prefers to avoid engagements entirely. The fur tufts developed below the ears also makes sense, it provides more points for the sensitive hairs, quite like whispers in real life cats. Umbreon evolved as a result of exposure to the moon's waves. Umbreon evolved from exposure to the moon's energy pulses. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? This is why I'm more inclined to believe magical wizard biota over whatever the Pokedex is. The moon does no such thing as this, the only thing very vaguely close to this is dung beetles using polarized moon beams to guide themselves as they roll poop. Umbreon sweating poison is not common among mammals, but poison dart frogs do something similar to this. Spraying it from the pores is odd though. Sun's entry specifying that it aims for eyes reminds me a great deal of horned lizards shooting blood from their eyes into coyotes' eyes and mouths. This blood contains the acid from ants, smelling foul and causing stinging. So while spraying Spraying from the pores is odd, the spraying of poison at a foe is something that we do have in real life. Umbreon's rings glowing and striking fear is reminiscent of the threat display talked about with Vaporeon's gills, the sudden brightness causing a momentary stun. How do they glow though? Is it the same glow as Espeon's? The purpose of the glowing rings may also be a mating display, showing off the healthiness and vitality to potential mates. Umbreon hiding in darkness and waiting for foes to make a move is presumably not very effective due to the glowing rings on its body, if the deck sentries are to be believed. This may still be effective when fighting harder opponents, as a few glowing points are harder to hit than a fully seen body. According to the sentry, it seems that it can control the glow of its rings. Also, going for the throat first like this is a cat hunting tactic. Canines just usually shake prey until it's done, but cats aim to disable them first. One entry states that it's nocturnal, which is fine, but it says that it can see in total darkness. I believe I've talked about this before, but cats are blind in total darkness just like we are. They just see better in low light conditions. And finally, why did they lose the ear? The ears are now decorative head structures with no hole. Onto Leafeon, where the evolutions totally throw any chance of realism out the window. Just like a plant, it uses photosynthesis. This implies that it isn't a plant, and further entries state that it has plant-like properties, meaning the eventual Tree of Life video series will face quite the hurdle with grass types. It is also actually photosynthetic, as it even turns atmospheric carbon into oxygen. The photosynthetic cells in plants and eyes in animals are theorized to be from the same cellular structure very long ago. That doesn't make this anywhere close to reasonable. If you believe the bacteria theory I posited earlier, then it does become a bit more reasonable but still off the wall. Photosynthesis supplies all of its energy, which is a sudden change in diet. This is very far removed from its relatives, obviously. Why is this lime full of such egregious changes? Also, how does it get the rest of its nutrients? Does photosynthesis supply the energy, so anything else it eats is only for the nutritional value? According to this text entry, they smell like fresh grass when they're young, and fall on leaves when they're older. Grass doesn't have much of a smell at all until you cut it, and that smell is actually a distress signal. The smell of fallen leaves is, of course, the smell of dying and decomposing leaves. This entry is less poetic than it thinks it is. The Pokedex says that Leafeon doesn't like to speak, but most animals don't. Fighting in the animal world is mostly done for food, as a simple scratch can lead to infection and demise. I suppose the Pokemon world is full of animaloids that like to fight though, so it's probably different. The deck says that it sharpens the leaf on its tail into a blade. Now plant cells are actually quite impressive structurally, so a Pokemon developing this over time is not that crazy to me. What is crazy though, is that this was a generic fox as recently as moments before this, and the fact that the blade isn't just cutting flesh, but can cut clean through large trees in one swing. At least it has realer pupils, even though they're brown. It's also a nice touch that the hair is overgrown, and it's not cool dinosaur syndrome, as the only part of plants that can to synthesize are the green parts of them, so Leafeon would need a lot of green on its body to fuel itself. Onto Glaceon. It sometimes freezes its fur to stand like icicles as a defense mechanism. As we learned with Jolteon, this is something we almost see in real life, minus the freezing. Violet even tells us that it can fire its fur needles much like Jolteon. The ice crystals materializing around it are presumably Glaceon freezing molecules present in the air. What doesn't make sense is how it's able to cause such temperatures, but at least it gets reasonably cold. What I especially don't like is that it's controlling its body temperature. Most life can only live in a very small range of temperature, but there are some species that lower it for hibernation. It never gets to freezing. Though. Well, never mind. It gets to negative 60 Celsius in Glaceon. At least there's only one zero, I suppose, unlike some of the Pokemon I've looked at on this channel. Even Sun and Moon don't have compelling entries for Glaceon, how unfortunate. These swirls on the side of its face are strange. They're reminiscent of Espeon's, but Glaceon isn't sensing any air currents. These may just be for display, either for mates or predators. Normally, snowy habitat species have larger paws that splay out to better move across snow, but Glaceon's paws look identical to the other evolutions. And finally, we have Sylveon. Following in the footsteps of Leafeon, it stops others from fighting with its 
soothing ribbons. However, this is only done to get free blows in on an unsuspecting, relaxed opponent. The ribbons are also used as a distraction for prey. This will probably not be done against a typical prey species, so this may be specifically for prey that can fight back. It does fight dragon Pokemon, so these are the likely targets for such a maneuver. Legends Arceus confirms that these are organ structures and not just tendrils of skin and fur. The skin is technically an organ. According to Violet, it has piercing moves. Are these feelers actually sharp, or is this referring to teeth and claws? All of these ribbons would also contribute to some very impressive balancing for Sylveon, making it quite capable of both fighting and fleeing. Is the ribbon on its ear another set of feelers? Are these ones for display, much like Glaceon's strange bangs? And those were the evolutions. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, don't forget to subscribe, and also vote in the poll for the episode following next. The next episode will be Growlithe and Arcanine, but after that it's totally up in the air. Please share the video around, and thank you for watching. Bye.